nature. Guys, I don't know if, how many times you've experienced like a whale or a dolphin in the water, but it is so cool. It's it awesome. really is. Oh. I have. I always grew up thinking even like, better wow. luck, the, be <laughs> yes. the best luck you could have. So what if you're on like a paddle board or in a kayak and nerve wracking? <laughs> Hopefully they don't break your boat and then you're left stranded in the middle of the ocean for months. Right. The heart rate's going to go up, right? We can yeah. guarantee that. Oh yeah. You're not, you're not sure exactly what it is either, right? It's a big exactly. ocean beast. <laughs> All right, you guys have a good day. We'll keep it going right here on America's Morning Headquarters. Glad you are here. We will get you all through the mid-morning hours. Yeah, we are. And uh, Alex, I'm sitting in for Alex today. I'm, I'm actually sitting in his chair. It's awkward to be <laughs> on this side. I'm usually over where you are. Well, because you were sitting in for me last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe that's it. I don't know. We're, we're, just, we're just one big team and we've got you covered. We've got Indeed. a lot to talk about today, including the flooding. Uh, it actually can be a new issue as storms roll through. A couple of spots have been hard hit in recent days are going to see more rain coming back. Uh, look at that. I mean, that's incredible. The thunderstorms and the heavy rain that continue to pound yeah. parts of the Midwest night after night. This satellite loop shows the rain that got dumped on Kentucky and Tennessee yesterday. Yeah. It was incredible. It's still raining out there this morning. And, and we'll show you where new storms are going to fire up is that this area or not, right? Plus, the severe threats that we have, they can strike at any time. North Carolina got hit with a tornado yesterday. It's first ever EF3 tornado in middle North Carolina in July. I saw that, and it, we all did. Yeah. But the thing is, is that it wasn't in an area that was really sort of outlined by the earlier forecasts of the day that that was going to be a target zone yeah. for tornadoes. But it just happened. It's just one of those things that, you know what, small, little, highly unpredictable pieces of the circulation can make tornadoes. And we saw that here. We saw the damage effect in I-95. That was closed for hours. Thankfully, that's reopened today. But we'll yeah. talk more about that. And look, the heat is also a big story. It's been a focus mainly in the southern tier. But as we look ahead mm -hmm. to the trends, and we were just talking about this, it gets hot for everyone. That's right. And what was initially confined to the southern parts of the U.S. like this yeah. uh, over the next couple of days is going to begin to expand next week and to include many areas to the north, including yeah. big cities like Chicago and Minneapolis. The severe threats today, though, first uh, blast off. This morning, we start with a couple of showers out here overlaid on top of where there's going to be more showers later today. Nothing severe right now, just a little bit of rain into parts of western Oklahoma, Kansas, and eastern Colorado as well. Plus, of course, we've been keeping an eye on Missouri and all of this rain. But this zone back here is what I want to talk about. Eastern Colorado. Back in, into the high plains, we're talking about Kansas and sinking south here into the even the Texas panhandle. We could see some really damaging winds come out of these thunderstorms today in excess of not just 60 miles per hour, but perhaps 75 miles per hour. That's going to be a zone from Burlington all the way down through Guymon here in Oklahoma. Dodge City, Kansas, we're in that. Also could see some large hail out of this as well. What we're watching is just a couple of disturbances that will kind of help enhance the flow that come out of this zone right here into uh, coming off of the uh, the Rocky Mountains. And so that'll be an area that will see thunderstorm development through the afternoon, continuing into the evening. The moisture is there. There's probably going to be more, I think, as we get into the afternoon hours. Dew points will go up a little bit more, but it's summertime. So maybe most importantly, that sun heating things up is really going to increase the instability, and that's what's going to add to the storm threat here. So let's go ahead and take it and time it out for you. This is about two o'clock. We've got thunderstorms that are starting to pop here. That's about the timing we think is going to happen. This doesn't tell you exactly where they're going to be, but it gives you a sense of the timing and the fact that we're going to see some pretty widespread storms. They'll be pretty potent as we get through the early evening hours moving in general from west to east, and we'll see that continue as we get even into the overnight hours. There may be a big cluster of storms bringing a heavy rain threat along with the damaging wind threat as well. So with that heavy rain concern, there may be some flash flooding. We've got an area from Colorado into Kansas likely to see some storms that may bring so much rain it could cause some problems. We're going to keep a closer watch on Dodge City too. Your timing is later, so you go all day. It's a pretty nice day, right? I mean, it's warm. It's summertime, but watch what happens tonight. This is midnight and thunderstorms come in and around Dodge City. We'll see that all the hazards at play here, damaging winds, hail. Those are the two main risks, but there is an isolated tornado risk as well. And then in the morning, things will wind down. We'll get that out of here. But of course, tomorrow we've got to keep another watch on this zone here along the I-9 or I-25 corridor uh, in to Colorado and New Mexico. All right, let's jump over into the Ohio Valley. We've got a big batch of storms expected here today. Yeah, we do. Right, no, good point, because today could be another very active day, Justin. Thank you for that report here, and our hearts definitely go out to folks here who are dealing with this. We've had several areas around the nation dealing with flooding.
flooding, flash flooding in the last, what, 11 days, we've said 11 flash flood emergencies. The rainfall has been significant, especially in the Northeast. I want to talk about that now. And we're looking at how much rain we've had since July. You, you can see what's happened uh, in, in some of the areas that we've uh, been dealing with it. And uh, today we're going to be watching for more concerns of flooding. The ground is very saturated here thanks to the inches and inches and inches of rain we've seen. We're running a top wettest start to July on record for many, like in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, in Albany, New York, in Portland, we're number seven. Uh, even in Worcester, number two, we've had nearly 10 inches of rain so far in this month. Now, these are the areas that are going to be watching for heavy rain concerns. Greg talked about some of the severe risks that we're going to see here, but just the fact that it could rain pretty heavily is also a concern as well. Here's where we're at right now, and overall today, a pretty good day. So let's enjoy that. For now, we've got 70 to start today in Syracuse. The humidity is not that high. Same thing in Buffalo with some lower dew points. Enjoy that. That's all going to be changing because we are going to be watching for the moisture coming back out ahead of this cold front. As it comes in tomorrow, we will see and feel the humid conditions along with, of course, that threat for some heavy rainfall, I think, especially there in the parts of the Northeast. Now, let's go ahead and time things out. So we put the clock on. This starts uh, midday today. Tonight is when the storms come in. Watching Western New York and back down into Ohio, including around Cleveland, perhaps around Canton, Pittsburgh. Storms come through late night. And then overnight storms crossing New York State, crossing Pennsylvania, crossing Western Maryland, and we'll see that risk of severe weather with it, along with the heavy rain concerns. Now, once we get into tomorrow morning, we see those showers, some of them still lingering throughout the day on Friday, continuing even into the overnight. We'll see a few showers out there across eastern parts of New England. The rainfall may be heavy, and this is both a feature of that and the fact that the ground is saturated. Streams and creeks are running high, so flood watches are up in northern New York State and into Vermont as well. Greg? Well, you know, I think it's fair to say you could gamble on the heat mm. coming northbound next week. Yeah, no, it really expands, and that's in part of the country that has not had much of a summer, really, below average. Every day we look at it, highs in the 70s and low 80s. Yeah. Very comfortable, but it's going to change. Makes a shock to the system. Yep. There also may be more dust out there in some spots. That's right. You know, Saharan air layer is out there, and we talk about that as these tropical waves from the coast of Africa, these ripples in the atmospheric flow, move across the deep oceans and carry with them. You know, summer is also typical peak time for wildfires, but they can happen at any time of the year. We've partnered with T-Mobile to bring you the science behind how wildfires begin so that you can be prepared. Meteorologist Alex Wilson has more. Hey, Friday Eve, right? So you're making plans. Let's go to Louisville because we've got the Street Food Festival, which is happening Saturday and Sunday, and the weather is going to clear just in time. We've got some tough weather potentially later tonight into tomorrow, but then after that, look at this. We've got sunshine. Temperatures are going to be in the low 80s. It's not going to be that humid compared to what we've been dealing with. The, the first ever, actually, Louisville Street Food Festival with the area's best food trucks, restaurants. There'll be axe throwing. Why not? I guess that's at every big event these days. Um, a crazy eating challenges as well as some cooking demonstrations and a giant free cookie fountain. Let's go to Monroeville, Pennsylvania for the next one. Summer Jam Cookout 23 is happening here on Saturday. Good looking forecast. We also get a drop in that humidity. Really lux out in time for the weekend. Lots of music going on. Multiple genres. Bollywood, hip hop. Uh, we've got food trucks and vendors. Jumping jump roo. Bouncy houses for the kids. So something for everyone. Baby, calm down, calm down. Yo, this yeah, Justin, thank you. We're going to forecast that because thunderstorms are on the way, potentially there. Other spots as well that had heavy rain yesterday, uh, like in Tennessee. That rainfall in Kentucky, yeah. potentially a 24-hour record for the o state of Kentucky. Over 11 inches in a 24-hour yeah. period. This is showing us that these thunderstorms that are moving through, which typically do this time of year, have a little extra kick to them, or a lot of extra kick, thanks to how moist the atmosphere is. So right now we've got some thunderstorms out there, and there's a new zone that we think will develop later on today. We've got this whole area in red over the east. There's another spot back to the high plains. But let's talk about what's happening right now. The thunderstorms in Missouri bringing two threats, severe as well as the risk for heavy rain. Yeah, and this is south of uh, St. Louis, which is up there near the banner. But this is now moving southeast through the 60-mile-per-hour wind potential uh, and significant rain, of course. No doubt about that with any of these storms. We have to watch out for that. But intensifying thunderstorms through the next few hours with severe hail, 
That's big hail mm -hmm. and strong winds likely. This is an area hard hit with some big rain yesterday. I mean, this very same area that Justin is in, Paducah, mm -hmm. we were talking about you. We've got more coming in. Now, we also have heavy rain right now going on into Missouri. There's a flash flood warning, Dillon, Osage Beach, and Rolla. This is a zone with rainfall rates running about two inch per hour at times. And so that's a concern for more flash flooding. And that area that's outlined there in green is by the Storm Prediction Center. This is a mesoscale discussion for heavy flooding threat. That is going to continue for the next several hours. And if that's not enough, there's another one yeah. to the southeast from there. And it may not be raining yet in all of these locations. But look, over by you, Jen, there's more storms mm -hmm. going to be rolling through the same area. So we'll see how those evict in. We'll yeah. see how new ones develop. And unfortunately, we may, with that high moisture potential, we may see more flash flooding. Then we got to get to the risk for severe come later today. The Northeast could see some big hail. Big hail, strong winds. We have all the ingredients that you need for a significant severe weather event, especially across parts of the northern Ohio Valley, Jen. It gets underway by this afternoon. We'll see storms on the move and we'll continue through tonight. Watch these storms progress. There they go. Heads up, western Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, all the way through. The, the model is carrying this area of thunderstorms all the way through with that cold front. They're not going to die uh, as su at sunset. And don't forget about this. Thunderstorms may be severe, strong winds over 75 right. miles per hour across the high plains. Stands more than 20 stories tall and has to be built or stacked piece by piece. Ah, well, astrophysicist Dr. Paul Sutter from Stony Brook University and the switch begins today. How long will it take to stack the Endeavour space shuttle and why is it such a challenge? Oh yeah, uh, it's going to take several. Today's a big day uh, for space news. Not only did the James Webb Space Telescope recently celebrate its one year anniversary, right? Uh, but just yesterday, the telescope detected a diamond-like carbon dust in the universe's earliest stars. What can you tell us about that and some of the other significant observations the telescope has made so far? Yeah, this is so thing. Mm -hmm. And the images are just stunning. They're so, they're so exotic. Uh, but speaking of observing, let's talk about what's happening on Mars. The Ingenuity helicopter celebrated its 50th complete flight back in April. How have researchers benefited from the data? And wow, I mean, it's still flying. That's surprising, too. <laughs> that works phenomenally. Astrophysicist Dr. Paul Shutter, Sutter, excuse me, thank you so much. He's from Stony Brook University, the Flatiron Institute in New York City. We appreciate you joining us, as always. Exciting stuff going on in space exploration. It's all Totally. I'm so mesmerized by some of that you were just showing. It's incredible. Did you see the thing rolling in the distance on Mars? Yes. Did oh. you feel like it was a ghost? Though? Either a ghost or a Martian. I feel like you did. All right. Well, we are asking you in our question of the day. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm. like, I'm so glad you put universe because the world would be pretty close minded. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And it just makes you even yes. that much more elevated in stature. Yeah. right? Very nice. No, so we'll continue, of course, sharing your responses. We'll keep them coming on the mm -hmm. show today. We're also talking more about the heat, the tropics, which are getting interesting, and the flooding. By the way, happy belated. America's Morning Headquarters to get you through the mid-morning hours. Once again, we have, you know, a whole lot of thunderstorms out there right now. And just remember, the Weather Channel is helping you plan for the big events ahead. Behind us is a cluster of thunderstorms that developed last night, continues to roll on through parts of the middle of the country again. Right. Again. Again. Kentucky, yeah. Tennessee. I know yesterday you guys were uh, cleaning up and the, well, we were still raining in the morning, quite honestly. But mm -hmm. today it's all about the cleanup before the next round of storms come in. And, you know, we also yesterday had a tornado in North Carolina. It's an EF3. Right. Eastern North Carolina in a place that really wasn't sort of on everybody's list for the place to see big, severe weather yesterday. But it happened. And another reminder that you don't necessarily need to be in the red zone in order to get severe weather. Yesterday was an example of that. This is the strongest tornado we've had in middle of July here mm -hmm. in this in this part of North Carolina. Yep. The heat is also going to be a big deal. And we will take you into all of that. The number of places that are dealing with a dangerous heat index expands today. And that just continues. It can Continues. And so what we've seen uh, plaguing the southern tier of the U.S. is this heat, and that is going to get over much more areas mm -hmm. next week as it expands northward. Mm -hmm. But first, the severe threats.